You're watching Carlton, ITV for the weekdays in London and the South East. From ITN, News at 10, with Trevor MacDonald. Major's plea, you have 72 hours to save the Union. Players' prediction, there won't be a landslide. Tales of horror from the missing refugees. And the final meet of the Quantock Stag Hunters. Good evening. With three days to go to the election, John Major and Tony Blair, for different reasons, both insisted today that the outcome was not a foregone conclusion. Mr. Major said again that the Conservatives were doing better than the polls suggested. He travelled to all the four countries in the United Kingdom today, telling voters that only the Conservatives would preserve the Union. Mr. Blair warned his supporters, not for the first time, not to expect a landslide. And the Liberal Democrat leader Paddy Ashdown said, as election day approaches, undecided voters are heading their way. Our political correspondent Michael Brunson reports. John Major is determined that if the Tories go down to defeat, it will never be said of him that he didn't do enough. So he deliberately ended a day of campaigning on the issue of whether the United Kingdom stays united with a highly unusual campaign speech right outside the House of Commons itself. All general elections have their own special character. <laughs> Having begun as Big Ben struck six, he continued with this message. You have 72 hours to save the Union. 72 hours to make sure that the nature of our government is not changed irrevocably. Not changed irrevocably for the worse. There is still all to play for, Mr Major said, though his message seemed tinged with overtones of perhaps it's over, as he talked about the way the campaign had been lots of fun and had had its moment. Tony Blair clearly believes it is all over for the Tories. He was beamed in from Nottingham for the benefit of the London-based media, who greatly enjoyed seeing the normally ultra-smooth Labour presentation literally fall apart. Thanks very much, guys. But Mr Blair strongly denied that he was going through the motions ahead of a Labour landslide. I don't think this is a landslide country. So we're not going to, you know, no matter how much the Conservatives are descending into chaos and division and incompetence, I mean, that's nothing much new. Uh, but what is important is that we carry on making the case for a different beginning under a new Labour government. And like Labour, the Liberal Democrats think that the Tories have had it. Today, at least two rival warlords are scrapping over the ruins of a once great party. Recrimination is rife and bitterness overflows. But as the Liberal Democrats make great play of former Tories who have switched to them, the Prime Minister still clings to the hope that enough of the undecided vote will at the very last moment stick with or turn to the Conservatives. Michael Brunson, News at 10, Westminster. Helicopters were more than ever the transport of the day for the party leaders as they packed ever more stops into a frenetic day of campaigning. Our correspondents were with them, first Tom Bradby with Mr Major, who began his day in Northern Ireland. He was travelling early this morning, touching down in Belfast shortly after nine, the first stop on his hectic campaign swing through the four corners of the United Kingdom. No Prime Minister has campaigned here during an election and no Tory candidate stands a realistic chance of winning a seat. But for Mr Major, this was a symbolic trip. Hey, Mr. Can I ask you why? Come here today. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mr Major. Great to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I often come to Northern Ireland. I like coming to Northern Ireland. <laughs> we, like coming coming to Northern Ireland. <laughs> we like having you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. We do. Tory sources said on the plane this morning that this trip had been planned for weeks and was designed, in their words, to underline dramatically their commitment to the Union. Mr Major is prepared to accept a Parliament for Northern Ireland because it's had one before, it will not have tax-raising powers and it is, he argues, a unique place. By lunchtime he was in Edinburgh arguing that a tax-raising Parliament for Scotland would be dangerous and would lead to the breakup of the United Kingdom. He took similar arguments to Wales this afternoon, visiting Anglesey before heading home and rounding off a thousand-mile tour designed to get his message across before it's too late. Tom Bradbury is at 10, London. <laughs> Mixing with British athletes at Loughborough University, the Labour leader got a lesson in politics from the rugby field. It's how we're going to tackle the Tories on Thursday. And as he came the closest yet to number 10 since the campaign started, 
this unorthodox rugby movement at least amused Cherie Blair. In Leicester, the by now familiar crowd of supporters was on hand as he spelled out again that Labour shouldn't get complacent. It can only be done if you come out and support us. Don't wake up on the 2nd of May to the same old Tories back again. Wake up on the 2nd of May to a new Labour government and new hope and new opportunity for Britain. To reduce Heckled this time by the hard left, Labour said it would be making a final push, particularly in the marginal constituencies. With its fleet of 11 helicopters for party and press, Labour says it'll be going non-stop between now and May the 1st. Above all, Mr Blair argues, because they'll be taking nothing for granted. Overconfidence, he will say, could still be Labour's undoing in the closing days of this campaign. Mark Webster News at 10, Leicester. Tonight at his Oxford rally, so many supporters turned up to hear Paddy Ashdown, they couldn't all get in. As a result, he decided to make an impromptu speech on the steps of the town hall for those who were locked out. The message is this, that we must sweep this bunch of rascals from power. His whistle-stop tour to visit key target seats had begun almost ten hours earlier. As he set off, even he needed to be reminded where he was going first. Uh, our first stop is Colchester. Is this oh, is Colchester yeah. On the ground, there was only time for a 15-minute stop to rally party workers. Then it was off to the next constituency for a quick walkabout in the town centre where he received one welcome word of encouragement from a passerby. I'm voting for you, mate. <laughs> it's now 2.40 in the afternoon and Paddy Ashton is on his fourth helicopter trip of the day. Next stop, a key marginal in south-west London. Unfortunately, by this stage, he'd fallen behind schedule. There was just time for another quick speech, but the whole visit lasted only nine minutes. Finally tonight, at his official rally, he ended his day appealing to One Nation Tories to come home to the Liberal Democrats. Caroline Kerr, News at 10, Oxford. The leaders of the main parties in Scotland took part in the television debate tonight. It was the first time they had gone head-to-head -head in the campaign. It was part of Scottish Television's Scottish 500 series of pre-election studio debates. IDN's David Rose watched the programme. This is the Scottish version of a debate England isn't allowed to see. The political leaders debating together live on television. Tonight on television in Scotland in front of a studio audience, some of the toughest argument came on home rule. The Parliament would then say no, and you would have conflict. Which view would prevail? According to Tony Blair, it would be the Westminster Parliament's view that would prevail. And that is how we would see the fracture of the United Kingdom. It's not George going Robertson. to be a parliament that is going to be allowed to vote itself into an independent state. Well, that is not it? what it is going but to be about. It is up to the people to decide. If they're not going to vote for Alex's party this week, it's a single issue party. It's thanks for well, separatism. The creation of a separate state and tearing apart of the union, that's something they one, can do. Well, Jeremy Scott Wallace, Wallace, an independent... Now, George Robertson is now saying they wouldn't be allowed to hold a referendum. It's oh. a quite incredible position. Okay, well, Either we have a sovereign parliament for well, a sovereign people, or we're Alex totally Simon, dependent let, on let Westminster. Me this, this Many countries I mean, are now decentralising. Spain, uh, Germany has a very well worked out system uh, of, de uh, of decentralisation. We want to work towards a federal system, Michael. But not all the questioners were impressed by the cooperation that brought the four together. Based on what I've seen tonight, I'm really surprised anything gets decided in Westminster at all. <laughs> I am, I mean, you are... What is remarkable is that four political leaders in Scotland have managed to reach agreement over appearing together on television where three failed to do so in England. David Rose, News at 10, Glasgow. Tonight's other election news, the referendum party leader Sir James Goldsmith held the last big meeting of his campaign tonight. Speaking in London and watched by his daughter, Jemima, and his grandson, he attacked all three main parties for keeping their options open over Europe and a single currency. The leader of Plaid Cymru, David Wigley, took the Welsh Nationalists' campaign to the steps of Cardiff City Hall today, the site where the party hopes a Welsh Parliament will eventually sit. And members of the Natural Law Party campaigned today, urging voters to take up yogic flying. They claim it's the key to proper government and a happy, prosperous and problem-free nation. And our political editor, Michael Brunson, is with me again tonight in the studio. 
Michael, that talk of Mr. Major's today, does he really think it can change anything at this late hour? Well, look, Mr. Major is determined absolutely to give it his very best shot. Whatever his private thoughts, he is just determined to go on and on and on to the last moment. Michael Heseltine took one view today. He said again that uh, they'd win by 60. The Tories will win by 60. Pressed on it, though, he said, well, it's more of an attitude of mind. I think that's probably true, because candidates I have spoken to today in both marginal and safe seats have, to a man and woman, said that they do not think that the Tories are going to make it. Now, what about the newspapers? Are they? They've played a, a role in this election so far. They did again on Sunday with another endorsement for Labour. More endorsements tomorrow? Yes, so we've got three coming up. The Financial Times is for the second successive election going for Labour. The Times, rather curiously, is for the first time ever not backing any party at all. It is saying that people should go and vote for Eurosceptic candidates because they think that that is the most important issue, though they are, frankly, rather warmer in their words towards Labour than they are to the Tories. And the London Evening Standard tomorrow will come out backing Labour uh, because of the incompetence, division, petty corruption and inadequate leadership shown by the Tories. Now, interesting that, because the author of that is one Max Hastings, former editor of the Daily Telegraph, and in his day, a very staunch Tory. Very quickly, Mike, any, any difference these papers will make, that kind of endorsement? I think they create the climate, to be very honest. And while, as I said, Mr. Major's giving it his absolutely best shot to the end, somehow or other, the mood seems to be very much that a, a, a Tory victory now, well, it looks as though it's going to be a miracle to, to, to bring it about. Michael Brunson, thank you. We have more of today's news ahead coming up, including...